Hi, in this video we are going to download and install uh, Windows Server 2016 in VirtualBox. Uh, we're going to use the evaluation copy of Windows Server 2016. So you can just search for it in Google, Windows Server 2016 evaluation. <clears throat> and you see uh, pops up right here, Windows Server 2016, Microsoft. I will put the URL right here uh, on the YouTube, or beneath the YouTube video as well. So we have a few, we have a few options. We're going to select uh, <clears throat> Windows Server 2016 Essentials. Uh, Windows Server 2016, this is the... Uh, if you click on the plus sign here, we've got a few options here. But if you click on the description, this is the cloud-ready operating system. Uh, we don't want that. For this evaluation, we are going to select Windows Server 2016 Essentials. Uh, here it asks you to put your information in. Uh, you can make this up. Uh, what you really need to get from here is under the pre-install information, it has a product key. So I'm going to go ahead and copy that key. And I'll put in my information here to start the evaluation. I'll just do dude, dude, dude. Company size doesn't matter. <clears throat> Title doesn't matter. Dude at dude.com. One 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 two 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 three 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 country doesn't matter we'll pick Bermuda. Click on continue. <clears throat> it asks you the language you want to download it in. I'll select English and click on download. And you see on the bottom left here it is downloading and it is about 4.5 gig. And this is the very long and convoluted file name, uh, but it is a ISO, because what we are going to do, <clears throat> once we're done downloading this ISO, we're going to install it in VirtualBox. So we'll go ahead and open up VirtualBox. Right now, we only have an Ubuntu server configured in VirtualBox. This was configured in a previous video. We're going to go ahead and select <clears throat> Tools, and then New. We are selecting a new virtual machine. We're going to call this Windows Server 2016. And you notice when I typed that in, it automatically defaulted here to Windows 2016 64-bit. We'll add Essentials at the end here, and you'll see it changed to NT4. So we need to modify that to be Windows 2016 right there. It's going to put this in the DVMs folder, which is the correct folder for me. I'll click on Next. This is the amount of RAM that VirtualBox is going to use for this virtual machine, which is 2 gig. That's OK for now. We can always go back and change this later. For the hard disk, it's recommending a size of 50 gig right here. Uh, this is in contrast to the Ubuntu server over here, which recommended a size of 10 gig. So we're going to head, we will go ahead and select create a virtual hard disk now. For the hard disk file type, uh, we will choose the VDI. Uh, this is a file type that is used for VirtualBox. It's the VirtualBox disk image format. Click Next there. Now we have two options. We can do a dynamically allocated or fixed size. Dynamically allocated basically means that the, the hard drive will only take up as much space as ne is needed by the operating system. So on the host system, the virtual machine's hard drive is really just a file. 
when we select dynamically allocated that file that represents the hard drive for the virtual machine, that file on the host will grow up to a maximum size of 50 gig in this situation, but it will only grow as necessary. If we choose fixed size, then the file on the hard drive of the host will be 50 gig total. So if we're concerned with space, if we think we may need more space, you should choose dynamically allocated because the hard drive, uh, which is represented as the file on the host operating system, will only use the amount necessary. Uh, but this is considered slower than a fixed size, uh, which will use the entire size of the hard drive, though. So if you're concerned about space, dynamically allocated. If you're concerned about speed, go with fixed size. <clears throat> in this situation, we are simply doing a test environment in a uh, virtual box uh, environment on a Windows 10 host. So we're not really concerned with speed. Uh, so we'll, I'll go ahead and select dynamically allocated. And here's the 50 gig it recommended. We could change this up or down. I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 50 gig. And this is the name of the file that represents the virtual hard disk. If I click here, it's going to create this file, Windows Server 2016.essentials.vdi uh, in this directory. So this file is what I was referring to earlier. This file on the host is actually representative of the hard drive for the virtual machine. This is the one we dynamically allocated. Go ahead and click on create. And now we have the environment set up, but we have not installed the operating system. So to review, we called this system, uh, which it shows over here in this window as well, Windows Server 2016 Essentials. It is Windows 2016 64-bit. There's the uh, directory. We chose two gig of RAM. These are the defaults for the uh, video. For the storage, this is our dynamically allocated file, 50 gig. There's the .vdi format, and the rest is OK. Um, by the default, this virtual machine will use NAT for the virtual adapter, which means this virtual machine will be able to get internet access through the host network. Now that we have all this set up, we still have to install the operating system. Basically, we've just got the environment set up. So I'll go ahead and click on Start here. <clears throat> And when I click on start, uh, there's nothing to start. We have to tell the virtual machine what to boot off of in order to install the operating system. In this case, this will be the ISO that you downloaded. So I'm going to click browse here. Here's the ISO. This is the 2016 Essentials ISO we downloaded. Click on open. Click on start. And now what this is doing is installing Windows Server 2016 from the ISO file. I can close these here for now. I'm going to use English and English, so click on Next. We're going to install now. It is starting. In a second, it's going to prompt you for that key. This is what you should have copied and pasted. So I'm going to highlight here, do a control V. I didn't paste in there, so let's go back to the evaluation here. Under pre-install information, here's the product key. Control C. Go back here. Control V. Not working. For some reason it won't paste, which is okay. Let's go ahead and type it in. 
So let's bring this back up. It's not too long. And we'll put this over here to the side. So it is in C P R seven dash K six Y H two B R X Y M Q M P P Q three P F six X. Uh, we'll see if that works. Let's just double check. N C P R seven K six Y H two B R X Y M Q M P P Q three P F six uh, X. Click on next. <clears throat> Now it's going to ask us for the license agreement. Go ahead and accept this. You can read it if you want to. Uh, in this situation, uh, we have two options here. We can do a custom install or an upgrade. Uh, in this situation, we're, we're going to do a custom because we're not upgrading from another operating system. We're installing Windows uh, from scratch. Here it asks us where we want to install Windows. So we've only set up one virtual hard drive. This is that 50 gig drive that we dynamically allocated. We can go ahead and just choose this and let Windows configure the uh, partitions. So go ahead and select Next. And now it's going to copy some files to that hard drive from the ISO and it'll start the installation. This will take a few minutes, so we, we will resume the video when this is a little bit closer to being finished. Now that the installation has finished, it should bring you here to a password prompt. This is where you're going to put in the administrator password. So you want this to be something secure, ideally. If I can type here. So I'll just make something up here. I'm not too concerned about security since this is this is just a test machine right now. Uh-oh, look at that. It doesn't match the complexity requirements. Uh, so we have to add all this garbage in here. Um, I'm not a fan of complexity requirements. I prefer long passwords that are a combination of words. So let me make up a password here that meets the complexity requirements. Uh, there we go. <clears throat> so I have a complex but not very secure password. So now Windows Server 2016 has been pretty much installed. It's still booting up here. There's a few post-install things we have to do. So this will take a few minutes to boot up. And you'll see uh, as you drag the mouse with VirtualBox, it'll go from the guest to the host. Looks like it's starting up. And you can also go to full screen mode here if you'd like. A scaled mode, adjust the window size. Uh, there's a few things we can do as well. I'm going to leave it this size for right now. So we're going to do control alt delete, but since we're in a virtual environment, uh, we can send a control alt delete right here, which is insert control alt delete. So we insert that, and it should bring up a prompt. All right, so it looks like the Control-Alt-Delete finally worked. Uh, it just took a while for this to fully come up. So here we're going to log on with our password. This is our complex password we selected. And now we are logging on as an administrator to the Windows Server 2016 machine. It's going to take a little while to log on here, um, but this is pretty much it. Now, once we log on, we're going to test a couple things to make sure we have network connectivity uh, through VirtualBox and to also uh, update the system, which is a good thing to do as soon as you get it set up. And while this is working, uh, let's go ahead and look at the uh, hard drive here. 
So this is what we set up earlier. We set up uh, on the D drive, what I set up is this VDI file right here. So this is the file we dynamically allocated. So this is really the hard drive that is being used by the virtual machine. So it can grow up to 50 gig, but right now it's at about 11.2 gig. If we would have selected fixed size, this would automatically be 50 gig to begin with. And in this folder is all the files necessary for VirtualBox to run the Windows Server 2016 uh, virtual machine. You can see the logs here. We go back, uh, we can look at this VBox file. So uh, we can open it with that. Uh, we can open it with Notepad, or you can install Notepad++ and open with that. So when we went through the install, this is where we made a lot of these uh, configurations in the GUI, and they were saved to here. RAM, we said 2048. Uh, we said down here the hard drive. You see here's some of the hard drive options right here. Here's the MAC address of the system. We can change the MAC address. And close that and see if it's up. Oh look, it's finally done. So over here, I'm gonna go ahead and say, say yes for this. That's fine since we're in a test environment. So we are finally at the configure Windows Essentials, Windows Server Essentials part here. Go ahead and click on Next. <clears throat> uh, for date and time, uh, I'll go back here. I'm in the central time zone, so I'm going to go ahead and change this. By default, it went to Pacific, <clears throat> so I'm going to select Central here. Click on OK. Click on Next. Company name. We'll say Top Gun, the server name, we'll call this Top Gun uh, DC for domain controller. We'll make it a domain controller later. <clears throat> Go ahead and click on Next. All right, so for the administrator account name, let's go ahead and put in an account name for the administrator and uh, a password. So we'll call this Maverick. Make a password here. For the updates, which is critical, uh, we want to go ahead and select Use Recommended Settings, which will install important and recommended updates. So this will help keep the server can uh, secure. So I click on configure there. Now this will take a while to um, get everything going. So we'll go to the command prompt and you can see it's still working. Uh, let's just do IP config. So we have a 10.02.15 address <clears throat> with a 10.02.2 default gateway. And as we discussed earlier, uh, this is very similar to uh, the Ubuntu image, and this is how uh, VirtualBox sets up the networking. So the very first machine VirtualBox assigns on the network is natted to this address. Then we can just verify we have connectivity. We can ping 1.1.1. There it goes. And it looks like it's still preparing. So a very long, laborious process. But we have Windows Server 2016 uh, set up at this point. <clears throat>